for you. Great. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Garcia, and I am the transportation planner with the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance. Um, thank you all for joining. Um, I guess we uh, want to make one note before we start. Um, if you are with the press or with the media, um, please uh, include um, you know your name and the the media outlet that you are with um, in in your um, bio and, and the name at the bottom, uh, just so that when we uh, go to the, the the questions at the end of this uh, forum, you know, we we can easily call on you. Um, and then there's also a uh, Q&A feature as well, so that folks can, um, you know, submit questions um, during the presentation, but also after in case that is easier. Um, so let's get started. Um, Nija is a citywide membership network and for 30 years uh, has linked grassroots organizations from low income neighborhoods and communities of color in their struggle for environmental justice. Uh, we are also part of the Electrify New York um, coalition, which is a statewide coalition of advocates for environmental justice, public transportation, uh, social justice and good jobs uh, fighting for a clean, equitable transportation network and future for New York. Um, today, we are joined um, by uh, several elected leaders to highlight the importance of clean transportation. Uh, now, transportation, as you all may know, is uh, the largest contributor to emissions in New York State. And there are over 50 public transit agencies uh, that operate about 8,500 transit buses across the state. Um, and today, four years after we launched our campaign in the coalition, we are calling on the state to adopt the Green Transit, Green Jobs Bill. The bill would require all transit agencies across the state to purchase only zero emission buses starting in 2029. Uh, and it would also establish uh, several protections for existing workers during this transition to ensure that folks are not uh, displaced from their jobs or from uh, their, their neighborhoods. And I can go on and on about this bill, um, but you know we do have a slate of speakers today um, who will go over different parts of the bill. Um, but first, you know, I want to call upon uh, Senator Kennedy of Buffalo to uh, talk about the bill. Um, and, you know, he is also one of the uh, bill sponsors. Uh, Senator Kennedy, please. Thank you very much, Kevin, for that kind introduction. Uh, it's great to see everybody here today. So many friends and advocates. I want to thank all of you for joining us here today in support of this important legislation. Um, whether we're talking about our brothers and sisters in organized labor across the board, including um, the UAW and CWA who've rallied alongside us in this fight, uh, or our environmental, transportation, workforce allies, the Tri-State Transportation Campaign, Jobs to Move America, Earth Justice, the New Yorkers for Clean Power, Environmental Advocates of New York, uh, so many others, you know, we're in good company today. Uh, so it's really great to be here. And of course, I'm really proud to sponsor this legislation alongside Assemblymember Jeff Dinowitz, a, a real champion, a true friend, uh, not only of mine, uh, but of communities across New York State. Assemblyman, uh, thank you for your leadership. Um, as many of you know, I'm the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. And every single year, thousands of bills are sent uh, to my committee for consideration. And uh, one of the things that I look for in reviewing these bills is whether or not the reforms that are being introduced will actually improve our transportation networks in the immediate term by correcting existing flaws. Uh, but just as importantly, uh, I'm focused on reforms that will impact New Yorkers and the infrastructure and transit networks that we all depend upon each and every day, but for the long term. 
So we're thinking about sustainable, innovative approaches that'll not only advance our state's progressive agenda, but will continue to underscore our commitment to high quality transportation and a greener, environmentally just New York. And that's really what we're here to discuss today. Uh, through this legislation, we're making a strong commitment to our environment by mandating that public transportation systems purchase zero emission buses and related equipment when going through the usual process of replacing their fleets. That would start as of 2029. Well, many of our transit networks across New York, including the MTA and the NFTA in Western New York, have already started this transition, and I know there are others, uh, but this is in thanks uh, in large part to investments from New York State. As you know, we've set a historic and ambition environmental agenda through the CLCPA, which specifically seeks to address and mitigate the effects of climate change by drastically cutting greenhouse gases, diverting the state's energy reliance to renewable sources, and creating green jobs to promote environmental justice statewide. So the CLCPA is the most comprehensive document, um, aggressive climate change legislation in the entire nation. We're so proud of that. And it was advanced under the leadership of our great Senate Majority Leader, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins. It's legislation that we're discussing here today that only builds on the monumental progress and the aggressive goals that we have set. And so as we continue to build momentum on this bill, I'm proud to deliver some good news as the chair of the Transportation Committee that uh, I'll be advancing this bill through my committee in less than an hour. Uh, so it's taking its next step in the process of getting advanced finally to the floor of the Senate for final approval and ultimately uh, through the assembly to the governor's desk. Uh, this is big news that we're advancing this bill in the Transportation Committee here today. And we're looking forward to finally getting this over the finish line. So to everyone that's worked so hard to unveil this package, I truly want to thank you for your leadership, your continued commitment, your partnership, and your passion, and uh, really your focus on a green, more sustainable New York. And we look forward to working with each and every one of you in the uh, days and weeks ahead. So uh, again, I'm proud uh, and honored to be here with you this morning. Thank you so much, Senator Kennedy, and thank you for being a champion and leader on this bill. And uh, you know, we're we're glad to hear that it's going to be moving uh, forward this this afternoon. Um, and you know, we'll definitely keep our our eyes peeled on on um, all the outlets uh, to see an update on that. Um, now, I want to turn it over to uh, another champion and leader on this bill, uh, Assemblymember Dinowitz of the Bronx, who you know, is is also the bill sponsor and we'll be making sure that this bill moves forward. Um, please, some member dinner, what's the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, from the beautiful Bronx, uh, I'm very proud to sponsor this legislation along with our, our good friend, Senator Kennedy. Uh, we have support from both ends of the state on this. And I, I can't think of what's more important. The work that we do to address the issue of climate change uh, is perhaps the most important thing we can be doing for our future, but more importantly, for the future of our children, our grandchildren. Uh, and we're at a point in time where we have to do this work. Uh, that's why I'm the sponsor in the assembly of the uh, Climate Change Superfund Act, for example. But this bill in particular, um, I think will go a long way towards addressing an issue which has uh, long gone unaddressed, but uh, since the uh, since we passed the CLCPA, we have so much work to do, and by mandating that starting in 2029, which is only a few short years away, that uh, all, all the buses around the state, uh, that they, they start to adhere to the provisions of this bill, and hopefully within, I guess, six years after that, uh, we'll be up to 100%. The impact that we will have uh, is, is going to be uh, huge. And the fact that we're able to bring together a coalition 
of, of labor, of environmentalists, of, of people in transportation area. That's what it's going to take to get this passed because you know we've had so many examples in the past where uh, some of, of these groups have been at odds with each other, but this is something which uh, I think there's agreement by everybody that we can do this. The bill has specific goals in it. It has labor protections in it. And uh, this is exactly the, the way we should be going about trying to make sure that we can carry out all the provisions of the CLCPA, that we can start to have the impact that we need on giving us uh, the cleaner air that our grandchildren um, are entitled to. And so green transit, green jobs is another key in doing the work that we need to do to uh, stop climate change, to reverse climate change, to make sure that we have a future uh, that all of our, uh, of, of our family members and our neighbors uh, have a, a clean future in New York. So uh, I am looking forward to, to working on this. I see two of my colleagues are on the call, Assembly Member Joanne Simon from Brooklyn and Assembly Member Chantel Jackson uh, from the Bronx. And I know that like me, they and so many others not on this call know that this is something that's not only important, but this is something that we have to get done and that we will get done. So I, I thank all of you, all of the advocates uh, for your work on this. Uh, you are going to make a difference in a lot of lives. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Dinowitz. And, um, you know, so will you once uh, you help get this over the finish line. Um, you know, I want to be mindful of time. I know uh, a lot of the elected leaders here, you know, uh, have some hard stops. Um, so, you know, want to keep moving forward and uh, call on uh, Assemblymember uh, Joanne Simon um, to, to talk about the bill um, and her support. Thank you so much. I want to thank the uh, the sponsors of this bill, Assemblymember Dinowitz and Senator Kennedy, as well as the advocates who've been working with us on this. You know, um, as it's already been said, climate change is the issue that will just really, you know, we can't, we need to, to keep our planet. There's no planet B, as they say. And uh, what I, you know, this bill is so important because it's about public transportation. It's about those systems. It's about uh, incentivizing the use of uh, electric vehicles by giving it specific timeframes, by dealing with workforce issues, for example, uh, by uh, not making electricity more expensive for people to use when it comes to these systems for public transportation. And while the Bronx may be beautiful, so is Brooklyn. And uh, I represent a district with an awful lot of transportation, something like 17 bus lines come into downtown Brooklyn every day. So, um, you know, the, the congestion and the air quality in my district really would be a greatly improved uh, by having uh, electric vehicles. And I know the MTA uh, has already announced that they're going to be doing that, but I think it's a great model uh, for the rest of the state because uh, everybody deserves to be able to breathe clean air and to have a climate that uh, we can we can live in. So I just want to thank everybody and tell you I'm very happy to continue working with you on this bill and I'm looking forward to voting for it. Thanks. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Simon, and you know, thank you for your time and for your presence and attention today. And you know, we, we agree 100% with the sentiment that everyone deserves to be able to uh, breathe clean air. Um, I know we just went to, I know we left the Bronx and we went to Brooklyn, but let's uh, go back to the Bronx. And you know, I want to give the floor to Assemblymember uh, Jackson to talk about uh, her support for the bill. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to the advocates. Listen, the Bronx is uh, the unhealthiest county of the 62 counties we have in the state of New York. We have high rates of everything, including asthma. Asthma is affected by, of course, the pollution in the air. Um, and, you know, I live in the South Bronx. My constituents are in the South Bronx. We have a lot of trucks, a lot of, um, we, we have Hunts Point Market, which I'm really happy to have. However, that means that there are a lot of trucks going in and out of our neighborhoods. And it's extremely important for us to have clean air. I would love to have a world where uh, my son can grow up and not have to deal with asthma and knowing that he will be one of the four other kids in his class that will be dealing with that same situation. We also can also use jobs, 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 jobs. And it makes sense for jobs to be clean jobs. Um, we are seen as the poorest congressional district. And so when it comes to anything that creates jobs and help out our economy, I'm all for and support of. So thank you all for, 
for this work and I look forward to doing whatever it takes to get this across the finish line. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Jackson. Um, we we also have a, a bunch of uh, labor advocates and supporters and allies uh, for this bill. Um, so I first want to call upon uh, the regional director for UAW 9A, uh, Brandon Mencia, to talk about uh, why you know his his union his group is supporting this bill. Thanks a lot, Kevin, and good to see you all, Senator Kennedy, Assembly members, and everyone else on this call. Um, I'm Brandon Mencia, the director of Region 9A, which includes New York City, uh, the Hudson Valley, Long Island, amongst other parts of the Northeast and Puerto Rico. Um, Region 9 represents the rest of New York State, uh, which I'm not the director of. But I am here today, first of all, to say that Queens is also represented. I am a Queens guy, so I've got the boroughs covered, it seems, a couple more, probably left. Um, but it's the position of our region. And the UAW International is one of the largest manufacturing unions um, in the country. That good jobs and environmental protections are not at odds. In fact, they need to go together for our survival and also for the uh, sustainability and survival of our economy and working people's uh, needs. So the future of our country and the state depends on community-centered, worker-centered, green economy initiatives such as this one. So currently UAW workers have good manufacturing jobs and it's our jobs as union representatives and union leaders to negotiate the best possible contracts um, with these employers and for our members. But we also need your support um, in the legislature in order to be able to uh, provide these jobs and secure these jobs and secure product. Um, so this transition towards a green economy needs to be have, needs to have workers at the center, at the core, in order to make sure that we're developing the sector and also taking care of workers, union and non-union alike. This bill can help bring these manufacturing jobs to New York State um, during uncertain economic times and times of massive inflation. This is exactly the moment that we need to be thinking about how to create good community sustaining jobs, jobs that last, jobs that have protections, good jobs, jobs that can grow entire communities. We applaud the Senate in passing the Green Transit Green Jobs Bill last legislative session, and Assemblymember Dinowitz in particular has continued support to work with us to make the bill stronger. And I'll say in particular, the US jobs plan in this bill creates a pathway to the family sustaining, community sustaining jobs that I've been talking about. So we're excited today to stand with our union partner, CWA, who I'm sure we'll hear from, and support our environmental partners here today in passing a bill that addresses both environmental and economic concerns. And we encourage state legislators to follow the lead of Senator Kennedy, Assemblymember Dinowitz, and everyone else on this call to make this legislative session a win-win for both of us, the environment and workers, by passing this legislation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Brandon. And um, you know, we also acknowledge that you know there's a lot of uh, you know labor uh, and, and workers uh, in in these uh, depots who uh, would be who are supportive of this bill. Uh, and we do have a video, a pre-recorded video to share with you all. Uh, it's from George Kerr, who is a part of IUECWA, um, but also a member of the New Flyers Worker United um, Union. Um, so I'll let Bryn uh, play the video now. Hello, my name is George Kerr, and after years of working non-union jobs in the retail construction industry, I know the difference a union can make and believe our tax dollars should be creating good family and community-sustaining jobs right here in New York. I work as an electric assembler at the newly unionized New Flower facility in Jamestown, New York, where we help assemble parts for public transit buses. New Flower workers like me want to see the Green Transit Green Jobs Bill become law because we know the difference legislation like this can make in the lives of working class New Yorkers. We were excited to see the inclusion of the US Jobs Plan in the legislation because it incentivizes bidders to compete up and allows high road employers to stay competitive. As a new IUE CWA member, I'm proud to be here today on behalf of New Flower Workers United in support of this bill. Alongside my brothers and sisters at the UAW and our environmental partners, we encourage our state legislators to follow the lead of Senator Kennedy and Assemblymember Dinowitz by passing green transit, green jobs. Thank you.
Thank you, George. Um, and next up, you know, I want to call upon uh, Moeen Dame uh, with uh, Jobs to Move America. Thanks. Yeah, and as we've heard earlier, New Yorkers face economic uncertainty and our climate crisis. And we need new ways of harnessing the power of our public dollars to invest in good jobs and healthy communities. And so the Green Transit Green Jobs Bill does just that. And we applaud the New York legislature for taking this huge step towards building a clean transportation sector that creates family sustaining jobs for workers in communities that need them the most. And the manufacturer sector throughout the country in upstate New York once supported solid community sustaining middle class jobs. After a peak of 1.6 million manufacturing workers in the mid 70s, New York's thriving industrial belt turned into a rust belt and there's less than half that number currently employed in the manufacturing sector. With this bill, New York can lead the way with the US jobs plan. It's a good jobs and equity policy that will change the way New York State invests our public dollars in order to create the most public good. As you've heard from our union partners, the UAW and CWA, the Green Transit Green Jobs Bill can assure that the state spends our public money on our environmentally just transition. We call on the New York legislature to pass this bill and lead the charge toward building a fair economy one that creates quality jobs and uplifts labor standards in this growing manufacturing sector. Thanks so much, Maureen. Um, and now I'll turn it over to uh, Jackie Cohen, the Director of Climate and Equity Policy at the Tri-State Transportation Program. Thanks so much, Kevin. Hi, everyone. I'm Jackie Cohen at Tri-State Transportation Campaign. We are a transit advocacy organization that for 30 years now have been fighting for more accessible um, and cleaner mobility in the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut region. Um, so happy Earth Week to everyone. Um, as we celebrate Earth Week, it's important to remember that we stand at a really pivotal moment in the fight against climate change, which is why I'm so honored to join forces with bill sponsors, Senator Kennedy, Assemblymember Denowitz, um, as well as my esteemed colleagues from Electrify New York as we rally in support of green transit, green jobs. Um, we mentioned before that you know everybody deserves to breathe clean air. And with the proliferation of the EV market taking hold across our country, this bill acknowledges that it's not just car owners that deserve to clean, uh, breathe clean air, but that those that ride the bus every day, take paratransit, that live near bus depots in urban areas, they also deserve to breathe clean air. This legislation represents a bold step towards investing in green transit infrastructure. It would require transit agencies to phase out purchase and use of fossil fuel burning buses and instead invest in zero emission transit. Um, its passage will help put our state on a path towards providing greener transit for all New Yorkers from Buffalo to Bayshore. Um, providing access to public transit is already one of our region's most important tools in fighting the climate crisis. Public transit is good for the environment. Transitioning to zero emission bus fleets only makes and strengthens that tool, only makes our transit systems even more valuable in the fight against climate change. This legislative session is our chance to show the world that New York is a leader on climate action. And that's why we're calling on leadership in Albany to pass green transit, green jobs this year and pave the way for cleaner, greener, and more just public transit in New York. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. And um, last but not least, I'll turn it over to Sophie Patka of Environmental Advocates New York. Thanks so much, Kevin, and thanks so much to my fellow advocates, as well as Assemblymember Dinowitz, Assemblymember Simon, and Assemblymember Jackson for being present here and for your leadership on this uh, bill. Um, green Transit Green Jobs is a natural next step in the fight against uh, pollution in New York State. Uh, Environmental Advocates New York has fought for the electrification of the state fleet and school buses, and we see zero emission transit buses as a natural next step. So there's a strong precedent for this legislation already set in the state, and it's a crucial step towards uh, implementing the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, as the transportation sector is our, one of our most polluting sectors at almost a third of the total. So passing Green Transit Green Jobs Jobs is a simple and effective strategy to target one of our most polluting sectors and will be a major win for communities across the state. Thank you so much. Thank you much. Thank you so much, Sophie. Um, 
And, and more importantly, thank you to everyone who was able to join today, uh, especially to our elected leaders. Um, you know, it's a very busy time, we know. Um, and, you know, we know that this bill will allow New York State to use the power of public dollars to invest in a fair, climate safe economy. Uh, the bill will also guarantee uh, breathable, clean air for both riders, workers, but for all New Yorkers. Uh, and we look forward to seeing the Green Transit, Green Jobs bill cross the finish line this session. Um, now we want to turn it over to, uh, you know, any questions from the press. Um, you know, just want to remind folks again, uh, if you are with the press or the media, you know, please just include uh, your name uh, and, and your, your outlet um, in, in the, the name. Um, but, you know, happy to answer any questions. And just to our attendees, you should be able to ask a question either using the Q&A function or the raise hand function. Um, if you would like to speak, you can just raise your hand and I can put you off of mute. And if for some reason you aren't able to use the raise hand function, you can just either put your question or say you would like to speak using the Q&A function and I can unmute you or broadcast your question that way. Okay, looks like we've got a question from WBEN. So Max, you should be able to speak down. And Max, if you're speaking, you are muted. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hi, I have a question for uh, State Senator Tim Kennedy or the assembly members. The NFTA electric buses were pulled this month due to a recall on the energy storage system. We've also heard reports coming from Connecticut that a bus has caught fire as a result of lithium batteries. Do you believe that the state should address all these safety concerns in this technology before putting this bill forward? I, I could certainly answer that. Uh, first of all, the bill wouldn't be effective until uh, the, 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 the various transit systems wouldn't have to comply until 2029. So uh, there is a little time. We do have to address all safety considerations. As you may know, I have two bills uh, with Senator Kruger addressing the issue of, of um, uh, the batteries, the lithium batteries, ion lithium batteries. Um, but yes, we have to address issues, but those issues can be dealt with without slowing down the process of doing what we have to do um, on this, we can't wait, you know, uh, we don't get our planet back after it's gone. So we have to deal with this now. And if there are other things we must do at the same time, we can walk and chew gum at the same time and we can certainly address that. But thank you for that question. And unfortunately I have to, I have chairing a codes committee meeting in one and a half minutes. So I have to excuse myself, but thank you all so much. Thank you, Assembly Member Dinwood. Um, I don't know if uh, Moyane or Brandon want to add in anything else uh, in response to that question. Yeah, I mean, we've heard right. safety is always a concern, but I can jump in, I mean, step back and let Brandon. I'll no, just say, um, you know, from a labor perspective, this is why I, we believe that labor, um, these should be organized jobs, not just you know, good jobs, because uh, under a union contract, you do establish um, health and safety protocols and standards to be able to be able to build and manufacture more efficiently and safely. And also you end up delivering better product, a better a better vehicle. So I think that's um, another priority of ours. So um, just to answer some of the concerns. There. And I'll piggyback off of what the assembly member Dinowitz had said earlier that this is about um, phasing in. So it's not like um, transit agencies have to abruptly adopt this new technology when 2029 hits. So there is time, as mentioned, for this technology to improve, to adjust, and you know they're not going to all be using you know battery electric buses suddenly at on 2029. They're easing it into phasing it in.
Thank you, Max. Um, happy to take any other questions um, in the press. Remember, you can drop the question in the Q&A or raise your hand. There are no further questions. Um, we have a, we have a oh, question in the in the chat in the Q and A, Kevin. Great, um, it just came in. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, so uh, Eric asked, uh, "What do you think is the biggest challenge in getting the bill passed?" Um, and this is Eric Harvey of Riverdale Press. Um, yeah, I I think uh, you know one of the things that is probably hardest about getting this bill passed is. Um, maybe uh, getting folks to understand, you know, the importance of both trying to reduce tailpipe emissions uh, from this uh, sector, this network of uh, public transportation, you know, particularly buses, um, but also making sure that there are uh, worker provisions that are in place so that as we're moving to this green, green clean transportation uh you know, uh, future that, you know, workers are not being left behind. Um, but other folks from Electrify New York, I don't know if you want to add in anything else. Yeah, as was mentioned earlier, there's always a fear around adopting new technology. And so, we put a lot of uh, thought and um, effort into addressing those concerns. Um, there's a data extension waiver in case there is a reason why um, existing low emission buses can't be transitioned out in time. There's also um, an attempt to make sure that if you're currently purchasing electric buses, that this won't you know, affect it immediately. And so we believe that like, you know, as Kevin said, that this transition needs to account for all aspects, right? The community and the workers. And so, you know, the making sure that this transition to purchasing these electric buses creates good jobs, it's an important component of it. And that's change that hasn't happened here in New York necessarily. And so we wanna make sure that this bill leads the way with that kind of um, policy. Thank you for that question, Eric. Um, we're happy to take any other questions from press. Um, just a reminder, you can type it in in the Q&A or uh, raise your hand and uh, we can call upon you. Uh, if there are no further questions, um, you know, we're happy to end it here. Um, and, you know, we can also be reached out to uh, via email uh, with, with other questions. Um, but, you know, we're excited that this bill uh, has been introduced. Uh, and, you know, we're excited to hear that it's going to be moving forward later today in the Transportation uh, uh, Committee in the Senate. Uh, and we look forward to it being uh, advanced in the assembly as well. Um, and, and most importantly, you know, we're, we're looking forward to uh, the governor signing on to this bill um, and, you know, getting this bill over the, the finish line to make sure that, you know, we have, you know, clean air um, and, you know, a fair economy. And, you know, we want to make sure that, um, you know, riders, workers, all of New Yorkers, uh, all of our communities are being protected and uh, are staying healthy. Thank you all so much. Thank you again to our elected leaders, to the Electrify New York Coalition, and to all of our allies who were here today. 
Um, and with that, we can end. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.